Lesson 1, Making a Difference in Food Security Hi Anna, have you thought about the options for how to make a difference in the lives of those affected by food scarcity? Hi John. Yes, I've been considering different approaches. How do you plan to address this issue? I think one way is to support local community gardens. By encouraging people to grow their own food, we can empower them to become self-sufficient. That's a great idea. Community gardens not only provide fresh produce, but also foster a sense of community and shared responsibility. Exactly. Another option could be to collaborate with food banks and organize donation drives to ensure that those in need have access to nutritious meals. I completely agree. Donating food can make a significant impact on alleviating hunger and improving food security. Additionally, we could raise awareness through educational programs, teaching people about sustainable farming practices and the importance of food conservation. Education is key. By equipping individuals with knowledge and skills, we empower them to make informed decisions regarding food production and consumption. Absolutely. It's also crucial to advocate for policies that support food security on a larger scale, both at the local and national levels. Policy change plays a vital role in addressing systemic issues related to food access and distribution. Working towards policy reforms can have a lasting impact. I agree. By collaborating with organizations and government entities, we can create a more supportive environment for individuals affected by food scarcity. In addition, fostering innovation in agriculture, such as promoting urban farming or introducing sustainable farming techniques, can enhance food production in resource-limited areas. Innovation is essential. By exploring new methods and technologies, we can maximize food production while minimizing environmental impact. Absolutely. It's important to find sustainable solutions that not only address immediate needs, but also ensure long-term food security. Moreover, forging partnerships with local businesses and restaurants can help reduce food waste by redistributing excess food to those in need. That's a great point. By redirecting surplus food, we can minimize waste and provide meals to individuals who would otherwise go hungry. Lastly, we can engage in fundraising initiatives to support organizations that work directly with food insecure communities, providing them with essential resources. Fundraising efforts can make a significant difference by providing financial support to organizations on the front lines of combating food scarcity. Overall, there are several avenues we can explore to make a positive impact on the lives of those affected by food insecurity. It requires a multifaceted approach. I couldn't agree more. It's important to combine efforts and work together towards a common goal of ensuring food security for all. Together, we can contribute to creating a world where everyone has access to nutritious food and the opportunity to thrive. Absolutely. Let's take action and make a difference in the lives of those affected by food scarcity. I'm ready to roll up my sleeves and get started.
Let's make a lasting impact together. Lesson 2 The Rich History of William and Mary. Hi Anna, did you know that the College of William and Mary was established in the 1690s? It's the second oldest college in America. Hey John. Yes, I'm aware of its rich history. It's fascinating to think about the legacy of such an esteemed institution. Absolutely. The fact that it has stood the test of time speaks to its significance and enduring impact on education. It's impressive how William and Mary has played a pivotal role in shaping the educational landscape of the United States. Indeed. The college has a strong reputation for academic excellence and has produced countless leaders in various fields. That's true. Many influential figures, including presidents, Supreme Court justices, and Nobel laureates, have graduated from William and Mary. It's remarkable to think about the caliber of individuals who have walked the halls of that historic institution. Absolutely. The college's commitment to intellectual rigor and fostering critical thinking has undoubtedly contributed to its prestigious reputation. And let's not forget about the beautiful campus. The architecture and serene surroundings add to the charm of the college. You're right. William and Mary's campus is known for its picturesque beauty with historic buildings and lush green spaces. It must be a delightful place to study and immerse oneself in a rich academic and cultural environment. Definitely. The college's emphasis on liberal arts education provides students with a well-rounded foundation for their future endeavors. That's a significant advantage. A liberal arts education encourages interdisciplinary learning and fosters a broad perspective. Absolutely. It equips students with critical thinking skills and the ability to adapt to a rapidly changing world. I can imagine that being part of the William and Mary community offers not only an excellent education but also a strong sense of belonging. Yes, the college's tight-knit community and vibrant student life contribute to a holistic college experience. It's wonderful to see how William and Mary continues to thrive and evolve, adapting to the needs of each generation of students. Indeed. It's a testament to the college's commitment to innovation and maintaining academic excellence. I'm inspired by the rich history and traditions of William and Mary. It's a place that truly values knowledge and personal growth. I couldn't agree more. The college's heritage serves as a reminder of the enduring power of education to shape lives and society. Well said. The College of William and Mary will always hold a special place in the history of American education. Absolutely. It's a true gem that continues to make a significant impact on generations of students. Let's celebrate the legacy of William and Mary and the role it has played in shaping the minds of future leaders. Lesson 3, Exploring the Concept of Smoothness Hi Anna, have you ever thought about what it means for something to be smooth? Hey John. Absolutely, smoothness refers to the absence of bumps or lumps on a surface, like a flat floor. 
That's right. A smooth surface feels even and consistent when you run your hand over it. It's interesting how different materials can have varying degrees of smoothness. For example, silk is known for its smooth texture. Definitely. Silk has a luxurious feel to it because of its smooth and soft nature. Smoothness can also describe the motion of an object. When something moves without any sudden changes or jerks, we say it moves smoothly. That's a good point. A well-oiled machine or a car with a good suspension system can provide a smooth ride. Smoothness can also be used metaphorically to describe the flow of a conversation or the progression of events. Absolutely. When a conversation flows smoothly, it means the exchange of ideas is seamless and uninterrupted. Similarly, when events unfold smoothly, it means they happen without any major obstacles or disruptions. Smoothness is often associated with a sense of elegance and grace. For example, a dancer's movements can be described as smooth. Yes, smoothness in dance showcases the dancer's ability to transition between steps fluidly and with precision. Smoothness can also be related to the taste and texture of food. A creamy dessert, like a silky smooth chocolate mousse, is a treat for the senses. Definitely. The smoothness of the mousse adds to its indulgent and pleasurable experience. It's interesting how smoothness can be appreciated in various aspects of our lives, from the physical to the abstract. Absolutely. It's a quality that we often seek and appreciate in different contexts. Smoothness can create a sense of comfort and ease, whether it's in the touch of a surface, the movement of an object, or the flow of a conversation. That's true. Smoothness adds a certain level of refinement and sophistication to our experiences. It's fascinating to explore how the concept of smoothness extends beyond just the physical realm. Indeed. It's a concept that encompasses both tangible and intangible aspects of our lives. Smoothness is something we value and strive for, whether it's in our interactions, our environment, or the things we create. Absolutely. It's a quality that enhances our overall experience and contributes to a sense of harmony. Smoothness is a characteristic worth appreciating and cultivating in our daily lives. Well said. Let's embrace and celebrate the beauty of smoothness in all its forms. Definitely. Here's to a life filled with smoothness, both in our physical surroundings and in our interactions with others. Lesson 4. Travel Essentials Hi Anna, I'm getting ready for my trip, and I just realized I need to pack my phone charger in my carry-on. Hey John. That's a smart move. It's always good to have your phone charger handy while traveling. Absolutely. I wouldn't want to run out of battery during my journey. It's essential to stay connected. You're absolutely right. A phone charger is one of those must-have items when you're on the go. And it's not just for charging our phones. 
Many airports and public spaces have charging stations available. That's true. Having your own charger ensures you can take advantage of those charging stations when needed. Plus, having a phone charger in your carry-on is convenient during layovers or long flights. Definitely. It gives you the option to use your phone or other electronic devices without worrying about the battery running out. It's also a good idea to pack an adapter if you're traveling internationally. Different countries have different plug types. That's an excellent point. An adapter allows you to use your charger with different types of electrical outlets. Another travel essential is a travel-sized toiletry kit. It's convenient to have your own toiletries in a compact package. Absolutely. Travel-sized toiletries comply with airline regulations and make it easier to freshen up during your journey. And don't forget about travel documents like your passport and boarding pass. Keep them easily accessible in your carry-on. Yes, it's crucial to have all your travel documents organized and within reach to streamline the check-in and boarding process. Having a travel pillow and a blanket can also make long flights or train rides more comfortable. Definitely. They provide extra support and warmth, allowing you to rest and relax during your journey. Speaking of comfort, wearing comfortable clothing and shoes is essential for a pleasant travel experience. Absolutely. Opt for breathable fabrics and shoes that are suitable for walking and standing for extended periods. It's a good idea to have a travel-sized first aid kit with essential items like band-aids and pain relievers. That's a smart precaution. It's always better to have those basics on hand in case of any minor injuries or discomfort. Lastly, having a small portable charger for your devices can be a lifesaver, especially if you're on the move and can't find a power outlet. Absolutely. A portable charger gives you the freedom to charge your devices anywhere, anytime. These travel essentials can make your journey more comfortable, convenient, and stress-free. Definitely. By being prepared and having these items with you, you'll be ready to tackle any travel adventure that comes your way. So true. It's all about being organized and having the essentials in place for a smooth and enjoyable trip. Absolutely. Wishing you a fantastic journey filled with exciting experiences and memorable moments. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm ready to grab my phone charger and set off on my travel adventure. Have a great time. Safe travels and enjoy every moment of your trip. Thank you. I'll make the most of it. Till we catch up again. Lesson 5, The Power of Understanding Hi Anna, have you ever heard the saying, before you judge someone, walk a mile in their shoes? Hey John. Yes, I'm familiar with that saying. It's a powerful one. Do you know what it means? Absolutely. It means that before you form an opinion or criticize someone, you should try to understand their perspective by putting yourself in their position.
That's a very insightful saying. It encourages empathy and reminds us not to rush to judgment without considering the circumstances of others. Exactly. It's a reminder to approach situations with an open mind and to consider the challenges and experiences that others may be facing. I think it's a very good saying. It promotes compassion and understanding in our interactions with others. Definitely. It encourages us to see the world through different lenses and to be more accepting and tolerant of diverse perspectives. It's a valuable lesson in empathy. When we take the time to understand someone's experiences, we can develop deeper connections and build stronger relationships. Absolutely. It's about stepping out of our own shoes and trying to see the world from someone else's point of view. And by doing so, we gain a broader understanding of the complexities of life and the unique challenges people may face. It also teaches us not to make snap judgments based on appearances or limited information. That's so true. We often don't know the full story behind someone's actions or choices, and it's important to remember that. The saying reminds us to approach others with kindness and to withhold judgment until we have a better understanding of their circumstances. And when we do that, we create a more inclusive and compassionate world. Absolutely. It's about fostering a culture of understanding and empathy, where we seek to learn from one another rather than making assumptions. It's a mindset that promotes growth and personal development. We can learn so much from the experiences and perspectives of others. That's a great point. When we embrace the concept of walking in someone else's shoes, we expand our own horizons and become more well-rounded individuals. And it's not just about understanding others, it's also about understanding ourselves better. It allows us to reflect on our own biases and preconceptions. You're absolutely right. It's a journey of self-discovery and personal growth, as we become more aware of our own limitations and biases. So true. By practicing empathy and understanding, we can create a more harmonious and inclusive society. It all starts with that willingness to step outside of our own perspectives and truly listen and understand one another. Definitely. Let's remember the power of walking in someone else's shoes and strive to be more compassionate and understanding in our interactions. Well said. Understanding is a powerful tool that can bridge gaps, foster connections, and make the world a better place. Absolutely. Let's embrace the power of understanding and continue to grow and learn from one another. Indeed. Together, let's create a world where empathy and understanding are at the forefront of our interactions. Lesson 6. Navigating Directions Hi Anna, I'm trying to find the new cafe downtown. Can you help me with directions? Hey John. Of course, I'd be happy to help. What's the address of the cafe? I don't have the exact address, but I heard it's on Main Street. Do you know where that is? Yes, I know Main Street. It's a popular area. To get there, you need to head downtown. 
Take the first left at the traffic light. Okay, take the first left at the traffic light. Got it. Then what should I do? After you turn left, continue straight for about two blocks. You'll see the cafe on your right-hand side. So, after the left turn, I go straight for two blocks, and the cafe will be on my right. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Just a heads up, parking in that area can be a bit challenging. Maybe consider using public transportation if it's convenient for you. That's a good point. I'll keep that in mind. Thanks for the advice. No problem at all. If you have any other questions or need further assistance, feel free to ask. Actually, since I'm in the area, are there any other interesting places to visit nearby? Definitely. There's a beautiful park just a few blocks away from the cafe. It's a great spot for a stroll or a picnic. That sounds lovely. I'll make sure to check it out. Anything else you recommend? If you're into art, there's a small art gallery a couple of streets over. They often have interesting exhibitions. That's right up my alley. I'll definitely pay a visit to the art gallery. Thanks for the suggestions. You're welcome. Enjoy your time exploring the area and have a great experience at the cafe. Thank you. I appreciate your help. I'm looking forward to discovering new places and enjoying a cup of coffee. I'm sure you'll have a fantastic time. If you need any more assistance in the future, don't hesitate to ask. I will. Thanks again. I'll see you later. Lesson 7, Weekend Adventures Hi Anna, how was your weekend? Hey. It was great. I visited a park and enjoyed the beautiful weather. How about yours? Hi. My weekend was fantastic too. I went hiking in the mountains and explored some scenic trails. That sounds amazing. I love being surrounded by nature. What was the highlight of your hiking trip? The highlight was definitely reaching the mountaintop and taking in the breathtaking view. It was absolutely stunning. I can only imagine. Nature has a way of leaving us in awe. Did you encounter any interesting wildlife during your hike? Yes, I spotted a deer grazing peacefully in the meadow. It was a magical moment to observe it in its natural habitat. That must have been a beautiful sight. It's always special to witness wildlife up close. Did you capture any photos? Absolutely. I took several photos to capture the stunning landscapes and the serene beauty of the surroundings. I'd love to see them sometime. Nature photography can be so captivating. Did you engage in any other outdoor activities? Besides hiking, I also tried my hand at fishing in a nearby river. It was a relaxing experience, even though I didn't catch anything. 
Fishing sounds like a peaceful way to spend time outdoors. Sometimes, it's about enjoying the process rather than the outcome. Exactly. It was more about the tranquility of the river and the soothing sounds of nature. It was a refreshing break from the city. I couldn't agree more. Disconnecting from the hustle and bustle of daily life can be rejuvenating. Did you have any other adventures? On the way back, I stumbled upon a quaint little coffee shop. I couldn't resist the aroma, so I stopped for a cup of freshly brewed coffee. That sounds delightful. Exploring hidden gems and discovering new places is always an exciting part of any adventure. Did you enjoy the coffee? Absolutely. The coffee was exceptional, and the cozy atmosphere of the cafe made it the perfect spot to unwind and reflect on the day. It's those little moments of relaxation and reflection that make the weekend truly special. Any plans for the upcoming week? I plan to carry the weekend's positive energy into the week by staying active and incorporating more outdoor activities into my routine. That's a great plan. Keeping the momentum going and finding moments of joy in everyday life can make a big difference. Enjoy your week. Thank you. Wishing you a fantastic week as well. Let's make the most of each day and create more memorable adventures. Lesson 8 Unexpected Discoveries Hey Anna, you won't believe what happened to me yesterday. Hello John, what happened? I'm all ears. I was taking a leisurely stroll in the park when I stumbled upon an ancient artifact buried in the ground. Oh no, that must have been quite a surprise. What did you do next? I carefully unearthed it and realized it was a small, intricately carved statue. It was a remarkable find. That sounds incredible. Did you try to find out more about the statue's origin and historical significance? Definitely. I took it to a local museum, and the curator was fascinated by it. They're conducting research to uncover its story. That's fantastic. It's amazing how unexpected discoveries can lead to new insights into our past. Did you explore the area too? Yes, after finding the artifact, I decided to explore the surrounding area. I stumbled upon an old, abandoned building. Exploring abandoned places can be quite intriguing. What did you find inside the building? The building was filled with remnants of the past old furniture, dusty books, and antique photographs. It was like stepping back in time. It must have been a fascinating experience to get a glimpse into the lives of people from a different era. Did you find anything particularly interesting? Among the items, I found a handwritten journal detailing the adventures of a traveler from the early 1900s. It was like reading a captivating novel. That's remarkable. Journals can provide valuable insights into historical events and personal experiences. Did you learn anything significant from it? The journal described the travelers' encounters with different cultures and their reflections on the beauty of diversity. It was truly inspiring. 
Lesson 9, Fashion Frenzy. Hi Anna, I have something for you. Are you interested? Hello John, I'm definitely curious. What do you have for me? I recently bought a beautiful dress and I thought it might suit you. Would you like to try it on? Oh, that's lovely. I'm always up for trying new outfits. Sure, I'd love to give it a go. Great! Here's a medium-sized dress for you to try on. I think the color will complement your complexion. Thank you. The color looks vibrant. I can't wait to see how it looks on me. Tries on the dress. Wow! The dress fits you perfectly. The style really accentuates your figure. I'm glad to hear that. The design is elegant, and the fabric feels comfortable. It's definitely a head-turner. Absolutely. You'll make a stunning impression wherever you go. It's a great addition to your wardrobe. Thank you for thinking of me. It's always fun to experiment with different styles and express myself through fashion. Fashion is a fantastic way to showcase your personality and boost your confidence. Do you have any favorite fashion trends? I'm drawn to classic pieces with a modern twist. Mixing timeless elements with contemporary fashion creates a unique look. That's a great approach. It allows you to stay stylish while adding your personal touch. Are there any fashion icons you admire? I've always been inspired by Audrey Hepburn's timeless elegance and Coco Chanel's revolutionary approach to fashion. They are indeed icons who have left a lasting impact on the fashion industry. Their influence is still felt today. Absolutely. Their contributions have shaped the way we perceive and appreciate fashion. It's fascinating to see how trends evolve. Fashion is a reflection of society and culture. It's a dynamic art form that continuously evolves and adapts to the times. Definitely. Fashion has the power to convey messages, break boundaries, and inspire creativity. It's a fascinating realm to explore. Indeed, fashion is a form of self-expression that allows us to showcase our individuality. It's a language of its own. Absolutely. It's been a delightful conversation about fashion and style. Thank you for sharing this dress with me. You're welcome. It was a pleasure. Remember, fashion is about embracing your uniqueness and having fun with it. Lesson 10, Dining Delights. Hey Anna, are you ready to order? The menu looks quite tempting. Hello John, I'm definitely hungry. Let's see what they have to offer. I'm in the mood for something delicious. I think I'll start with a refreshing drink. I'll just have water, please. What about you? Certainly, water sounds good. I'll have the same. Hydration is important, especially during meals. Absolutely, staying hydrated is essential for overall well-being. Now, on to the main course. 
What catches your eye? I'm torn between the grilled salmon and the vegetarian pasta. Both options sound delectable. What about you? The grilled salmon does sound tempting, but I'm in the mood for something different. I think I'll go for the lamb curry. That's a bold choice. I admire your adventurous palate. Spicy and flavorful, the lamb curry will surely satisfy your taste buds. I'm always up for trying new flavors and experiencing different cuisines. It adds excitement to the dining experience. I couldn't agree more. Exploring diverse culinary delights opens up a world of gastronomic pleasure. It's like a journey for the senses. Indeed, food has a way of bringing people together and creating unforgettable memories. It's the essence of culture and hospitality. Absolutely. Sharing a meal allows us to connect, bond, and appreciate the richness of different traditions. It's a beautiful experience. Speaking of experiences, have you ever tried any exotic or unusual dishes during your travels? Yes, I've had the opportunity to taste unique delicacies like fried crickets in Thailand and escargots in France. It was quite an adventure. That sounds fascinating. Trying local delicacies is a fantastic way to immerse yourself in the culture of a place. It's a culinary exploration. It truly is. Food has a way of transcending language barriers and creating connections. It's a universal language that everyone understands. Absolutely. The joy of savoring delicious food is something everyone can appreciate. It's a shared experience that brings people together. Lesson 11, Risk and Reflection. Hey Anna, I've been thinking about the concept of risk lately. It's something that affects us in various aspects of life. Hello John, you're right. Risk is ever-present, and it's essential to assess it before making decisions. What aspect are you specifically referring to? I've been contemplating how certain professions, like mining or deep-sea diving, are perpetually at risk. It takes courage to pursue such careers. Absolutely, those professions require individuals who are willing to face danger head-on. However, there are also less hazardous alternatives that still offer excitement. That's true. It's important to weigh the potential risks and rewards when choosing a career path. Safety should always be a priority. Definitely. We should aim for a balance between pursuing our passions and ensuring our well-being. It's about making informed choices. Speaking of risks, I recently had the opportunity to visit Angola a country known for its rich natural resources. It made me reflect on the risks associated with resource extraction. Angola does have a wealth of natural resources, particularly diamonds and oil. Extraction activities often involve technical skills and can be quite hazardous. Exactly. I had the chance to meet some local workers who shared their experiences. It made me appreciate the importance of safety measures and proper training. That's a valuable insight. 
Ensuring the well-being of workers and minimizing environmental risks should always be a priority in resource-based industries. Absolutely. It's crucial to strike a balance between economic development and sustainability. Responsible practices can mitigate potential damages. I couldn't agree more. It's heartening to see that many companies are adopting more sustainable approaches and investing in safety measures. Indeed, the realization that human lives and the environment are at stake should drive us to continually improve and innovate. Safety should never be compromised. Absolutely. By prioritizing safety, we create a conducive environment for growth and progress. It's a win-win situation for everyone involved. Reflecting on my visit to Angola and our discussion, it's clear that risk assessment and safety consciousness are crucial in various aspects of life. You're right. Whether it's choosing a career, engaging in resource extraction, or even everyday decision-making, considering the risks is essential. So let's remember to make informed choices, prioritize safety, and always strive for a better, more secure future. Lesson 12, Opening Hours Inquiry Hey Anna, do you happen to know the opening hours of that new restaurant downtown? I've been meaning to try it out. Hello John, yes, I looked it up. They open at 12 p.m. and close at 10 p.m. It seems like they have a decent window of operation. That's convenient. It gives us plenty of time to plan a visit. I'm curious about their menu and ambience. Absolutely, it's always exciting to explore new dining experiences. I heard they offer a variety of cuisines to cater to different tastes. That's great. It means we'll have plenty of options to choose from. I'm particularly interested in trying their signature dish. Signature dishes often showcase the unique flavors and creativity of the restaurant. It's a great way to get a sense of their culinary expertise. I couldn't agree more. It's like a culinary adventure, discovering new flavors and combinations that delight the palate. Definitely. Trying new dishes broadens our culinary horizons and introduces us to different cultural influences. It's fascinating how food can be a gateway to understanding different traditions and customs. It's a feast for the senses. Absolutely. And knowing the opening hours of various establishments allows us to plan our day effectively. That's true. It helps us avoid disappointment or wasting time by ensuring we visit during their operational hours. Plus, it's always a good idea to make reservations if possible, especially during peak hours. It guarantees a smooth dining experience. You're right. Making reservations ensures we have a table waiting for us and prevents unnecessary waiting time. It's all about optimizing our dining experience and making the most of our time. That way, we can fully savor the moment. Exactly. So, let's make a plan to visit the restaurant during their opening hours and indulge in their culinary delights. Sounds like a plan. I'm looking forward to it. A memorable dining experience awaits us.
indeed. Let's embrace the opportunity to create new memories and enjoy the gastronomic journey that lies ahead. Lesson 13, Solo Travel Tips Hey Anna, I've been thinking about traveling alone. Are there any important things I should consider while planning my trip? Hello John, solo travel can be a fantastic adventure. One important aspect is to make sure to inform your loved ones of your itinerary. That's a good point. It's crucial to keep them updated on my whereabouts for safety purposes. What else should I keep in mind? Another key consideration is researching the local customs and cultural norms of your destination. It helps to show respect and avoid misunderstandings. Absolutely. Being aware of cultural sensitivities allows us to engage with locals in a more meaningful way and fosters positive interactions. Additionally, it's essential to have a backup plan in case of any unforeseen circumstances. Flexibility and adaptability are key traits for solo travelers. I agree. Having alternative options ensures that I can navigate through any challenges that may arise during my journey. Another tip is to pack light. Traveling alone means you're responsible for your own belongings, so keeping it minimal is more convenient. That makes sense. Traveling light reduces the hassle of carrying heavy luggage and provides more freedom to move around comfortably. Absolutely. It's also a good idea to learn a few basic phrases in the local language. It helps with communication and shows your willingness to connect. Learning some key phrases sounds like a great way to immerse myself in the local culture and enhance my travel experience. Definitely. Locals appreciate the effort, even if you don't speak the language fluently. It helps to create a positive rapport with the community. I'll make sure to take note of that. Engaging with locals can provide valuable insights and recommendations for hidden gems in the area. Absolutely. Locals often know the best places to visit, eat, and explore. Their recommendations can lead to unforgettable experiences. Speaking of recommendations, do you have any suggestions for solo activities that are both enjoyable and safe? Absolutely. Exploring local markets, taking guided tours, or trying out outdoor activities like hiking or biking are great options for solo travelers. Those activities sound exciting and fulfilling. It's a great way to embrace the spirit of adventure while enjoying a sense of independence. Definitely. Solo travel allows you to discover yourself, gain self-confidence, and create lifelong memories. It's a transformative experience. I'm feeling more confident and excited about embarking on a solo adventure now, thanks to your valuable tips. Lesson 14, Artistic Preferences Hey Anna, I recently got into painting. I find it quite fascinating. What kind of paintings do you enjoy? Hi John, that's interesting. I appreciate various styles, but I particularly enjoy landscape paintings. The way artists capture nature's beauty is captivating to me. Landscape paintings can be truly mesmerizing. The way artists depict different landscapes and play with colors is awe-inspiring. 
Absolutely. I also have a fondness for abstract art. I find the freedom of expression and interpretation intriguing. Abstract art is fascinating indeed. It allows us to explore different emotions and thoughts through non-representational forms and shapes. That's right. The beauty of abstract art lies in its ability to evoke unique feelings and interpretations in each viewer. I completely agree. It's like a visual language that communicates on an emotional level, transcending traditional boundaries. Precisely. Art has the power to evoke emotions, spark conversations, and provide a glimpse into the artist's perspective. It's incredible how art can be a universal language, connecting people from different cultures and backgrounds. Absolutely. It bridges gaps and fosters understanding, even when words fail. Art has a way of bringing people together. Speaking of bringing people together, have you ever visited art galleries or museums to explore different artworks? Yes, I enjoy visiting art galleries and museums. It's like immersing oneself in a world of creativity and inspiration. I couldn't agree more. It's a wonderful experience to witness the diverse range of artistic expressions in one place. And the best part is, you can discover new artists and styles that resonate with you, expanding your artistic horizons. That's the beauty of exploring art. It broadens our perspective and encourages us to appreciate the beauty in various forms. Indeed. Art has the power to stir our imagination, provoke thought, and encourage self-reflection. Absolutely. Engaging with art allows us to tap into our creativity and explore our own artistic potential. It's a journey of self-discovery and personal growth. Each brushstroke or color choice can reveal a part of ourselves. I couldn't have said it better. Whether as creators or appreciators, art adds depth and richness to our lives. Well said. So, keep exploring different art forms and let your own artistic journey unfold. There's so much to discover. Thank you. I'm excited to continue my artistic exploration and see where it takes me. Art truly is a boundless realm of inspiration. Lesson 15 Adaptability and Connection. Hey Anna, I've been reflecting on the importance of adaptability in today's fast-paced world. What are your thoughts on this? Hi John, adaptability is indeed crucial for navigating the ever-changing landscape. Being open to change allows us to thrive in different situations. Absolutely. It enables us to embrace new opportunities, overcome challenges, and continuously learn and grow. You're right. In a rapidly evolving world, adaptability becomes a valuable skill that helps us stay relevant and resilient. That's true. The ability to adapt allows us to respond effectively to unexpected circumstances and find innovative solutions. Exactly. It's like being a flexible tree that can withstand strong winds without breaking. Adaptability is essential for survival and progress. I couldn't agree more. 
And alongside adaptability, I believe strong leadership is also vital in driving positive change. What do you think? I completely agree. Leadership plays a significant role in inspiring others, fostering collaboration, and achieving shared goals. Precisely. A strong leader not only adapts to change but also guides and empowers their team to thrive in dynamic environments. Absolutely. Effective leadership encourages creativity, builds trust, and cultivates a culture of continuous improvement. That's spot on. A leader's ability to motivate and engage their team fosters a sense of purpose and encourages individual growth. Yes, indeed. It's important for leaders to create an environment where everyone feels valued and connected to the larger vision. Exactly. Connection is a crucial element in any organization, as it promotes collaboration, communication, and collective success. I couldn't agree more. When individuals feel connected and supported, they can achieve remarkable outcomes together. That's the power of a strong and connected team. They can adapt to change, overcome challenges, and achieve remarkable results. Absolutely. It's through adaptability and strong leadership that organizations can thrive and make a positive impact. Well said. The ability to adapt and foster connection is a winning combination in today's dynamic world. Lesson 16, The Evolution of Newspapers Hello Anna. Have you ever wondered about the evolution of newspapers and their impact on society? Hi John. Absolutely. Newspapers have played a significant role in shaping public discourse. They have a rich history. Indeed. The first newspapers appeared centuries ago, and they revolutionized the way information was disseminated. It's fascinating how newspapers evolved from handwritten accounts to printed publications, reaching a wider audience. Absolutely. The invention of the printing press in the 15th century paved the way for mass production of newspapers. That breakthrough democratized access to news. People could now stay informed about local and global events. Precisely. Newspapers became a primary source of information, and their circulation grew rapidly. And as newspapers gained popularity, they began to influence public opinion and shape the discourse on various issues. That's right. They became a platform for sharing ideas, sparking debates, and advocating for social and political change. It's interesting to note that newspapers played a crucial role in periods of revolution and societal transformation. Absolutely. They provided a voice for the marginalized and served as a catalyst for social movements. Over time, newspapers evolved further. They adopted new technologies, such as telegraphy and photography. The introduction of photographs in newspapers brought visual storytelling to readers, enhancing their engagement. And with the advent of the internet, newspapers transitioned from print to digital formats, expanding their reach even more. That's true. 
Online newspapers allow instant access to a wealth of information from around the world. And readers can now interact with the news through comments, social media shares, and even citizen journalism. The modern newspaper has become a multimedia platform, incorporating videos, infographics, and interactive elements. It's incredible how newspapers have adapted to the digital age, embracing new formats and engaging readers in innovative ways. Absolutely. Despite the changes, the core purpose of newspapers remains the same, to inform, educate, and empower readers. That's the beauty of journalism. It continues to evolve, but its essence lies in providing reliable and accurate information. Well said. The evolution of newspapers reflects our society's need for timely, diverse, and trustworthy news sources. Indeed. Let's continue to appreciate the role of newspapers in shaping public discourse and promoting informed citizenship. Absolutely. Here's to the continued evolution of newspapers, keeping us connected and well-informed. Lesson 17, Blooming Water Lilies Hey Anna, have you ever seen the beautiful water lilies in bloom during the summer? Hi John. Yes, they are truly a sight to behold. The vibrant colors and serene presence of water lilies are captivating. Absolutely. It's fascinating how they grace ponds and water bodies, adding a touch of natural beauty to the surroundings. Water lilies are not only visually stunning, but also have symbolic meanings in different cultures. They represent purity and enlightenment. That's interesting. It's amazing how nature can inspire such deep symbolism and evoke emotions in us. Definitely. Water lilies also have unique adaptations that enable them to thrive in aquatic environments. Really? What kind of adaptations do they have? Well, their broad leaves and air-filled chambers allow them to float on the water's surface and capture sunlight efficiently. Ah, so that's how they get the energy they need to grow and bloom. Exactly. The leaves also have a waxy coating that helps repel water, keeping them afloat and protecting them from damage. That's fascinating. Nature's way of providing these plants with the tools they need to survive. Indeed. And water lilies have an intricate root system that anchors them in the mud at the bottom of the pond. So, they are firmly rooted even though they appear to be floating on the water. Yes, that's correct. Their roots provide stability and access to nutrients essential for their growth. It's incredible how these plants adapt to their environment to thrive. Nature is full of wonders. Absolutely. And water lilies also serve an important ecological role by providing shade and shelter for aquatic organisms. That's true. They create a habitat for fish, frogs, and other creatures, contributing to the overall biodiversity of the ecosystem. Indeed. Nature has a way of creating interconnected relationships where every organism plays a part. 
It's a beautiful reminder of the importance of preserving our natural environments and protecting these delicate ecosystems. Absolutely. We have a responsibility to appreciate and care for the natural wonders around us, like the blooming water lilies. Well said. Let's continue to cherish and admire the beauty of nature, finding inspiration in its remarkable creations. I couldn't agree more. Nature has so much to teach us if we take the time to observe and appreciate its wonders. Indeed. Here's to the blooming water lilies and the lessons they teach us about resilience and beauty in harmony with nature. Lesson 18, Powering Electronic Devices. Hey Anna, do you have a phone charger? I forgot to bring mine. Hi John. Yes, I have one. Feel free to use it. Electronic devices are essential in our daily lives. Thank you. It's incredible how electronic devices have become indispensable tools for communication and productivity. Absolutely. From smartphones to laptops, these devices enable us to stay connected, access information, and accomplish tasks efficiently. They have indeed revolutionized the way we work, learn, and communicate. But have you ever wondered how they are powered? Definitely. Most electronic devices rely on batteries or need to be connected to a power source using chargers or cables. That's right. Batteries provide a portable source of power, allowing us to use our devices on the go. And chargers or cables help recharge the batteries or provide a direct power supply when connected to an electrical outlet. It's fascinating how these devices are designed to optimize power usage and prolong battery life. Yes, manufacturers are always striving to improve energy efficiency, ensuring that devices can operate for longer periods without recharging. That's great for convenience and sustainability. Speaking of sustainability, have you heard of renewable energy sources powering devices? Absolutely. Solar power is one such renewable energy source that has gained popularity. Solar chargers can harness the sun's energy to charge electronic devices. That's amazing. It's encouraging to see how technology is evolving to embrace more sustainable and eco-friendly solutions. Definitely. We can all contribute to reducing our carbon footprint by adopting such environmentally friendly practices. It's important to be mindful of our energy consumption and explore alternative ways to power our electronic devices. Absolutely. Small changes like unplugging chargers when not in use or using energy-efficient settings can make a difference. We can also consider using power banks or portable chargers for emergency power when we're on the go. That's a great suggestion. It's always handy to have backup power options, especially during travel or in situations where a power source is not readily available. Absolutely. Let's continue to stay informed about sustainable practices and make conscious choices to power our electronic devices responsibly. Well said. Together, we can contribute to a greener future while enjoying the benefits of our electronic devices.
indeed. Here's to the power of technology and our commitment to using it wisely and sustainably.